Good morning and welcome to FE Kids Online. My name's Rachel. I am the children's pastor here at Falkirk Vineyard Church and I am so happy that you're joining me for week one of our new series. It is called Stand Up. Yeah, so we are going to play a game to begin with. Okay, so I want you to all be sitting down on the ground um, and I want you to only stand up if um, this uh, statement is correct for you. So, stand up if you have a brother or a sister. Stand up if you have a middle name. Stand up if you take music lessons. Stand up if you like pizza. Stand up if you have a pet. Stand up if you are wearing clothes and that includes your pyjamas. Now, hopefully by now we have everyone standing up. Okay, so our new theme for this unit for the next five weeks is stand up. I won't make you stand any longer. You can sit back down now. So as a theme, stand up sounds pretty simple, right? Well, yes and no. See, I'm not talking about when we just stand up from, from the chair or stand up from getting out of bed. I'm talking about standing up for something. When you stand up for something, you are saying that you believe in it that it's important to you. And hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. So we're going to be looking at a few things that Jesus stood up for. And if we want to be followers of Jesus, we should be standing up for the same things he stood up for, right? Today, we are going to discover how Jesus stood up for justice. Now, understanding what we mean by justice is a little tricky because, well, the word has a few meanings. Justice can mean making sure people who break the law are punished. And justice can mean making sure that all the laws in the city are enforced. And justice can mean making sure that things are made right for people who have had wrong things done to them. Because we are interested in standing up for the same things Jesus stood up for, well, we're going to be looking at the Bible. We're going to be looking at the Bible and we're going to see about biblical justice. So what God meant when he talks about justice. So the definition of justice we are using is doing the right thing for people. So in our day to day living, well, justice will be treating everyone. And that's your family, your friends and your enemies equally with dignity and generosity. It doesn't mean that if you're younger or older or richer or poorer, have disabilities, dress differently, speak differently or have a different colour of skin. Oh, that's lots of ways that people can be different, right? Well, it means if there are people who aren't getting justice, well then we'll help them, we'll stand up for them. And isn't that how Jesus treated people? He didn't treat rich people better than poor people and he didn't refuse to help people who looked different or acted different. He always did the right thing and we want to be just like him and stand up for justice too. So we are going to head over, learn a new song. It's called Stand Up. There's actions to go with it. We're going to use it throughout this next five weeks. I want you to get used to the words and uh, the dance moves. I would always, always love to have videos of you sent in or pictures of you worshipping with your best singing and your best actions. Your grown-ups can send that to kids at fulkirkvineyard.com. Let's head over and worship God. Stand up, stand up for what you believe in. Stand up and be brave. Stand up, stand up for what you believe in. Stand up and be brave. Some may try to push you down, 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 but you be strong and stand your 
ground, ground, ground. Stay true to all that is good and right. God will be there in the darkest night. So stand up, stand up for what you believe in. Stand up and be brave. Stand up, stand up for what you believe in. Stand up and be brave. Some may try to push you down, down, down. But you be strong and stand your ground, ground, ground. Stay true to all that is good and right. God will be there in the darkest night. You are not on your own. You are never alone. God of the heavens is standing with you. You have God on your side. Know that he will provide all the courage you need to stand for what's right. You are not on your own. You are never alone. God of the heavens is standing with you. You have God on your side. Know that he will provide all the courage that you need to stand for what's right. Stand up, stand up for what you believe in. Stand up and be brave. Stand up, stand up for what you believe in. Stand up and be brave. Some may try to push you down, down, down. But you be strong and stand your ground, ground, ground. Stay true to all that is good and right. God will be there in the darkest night. So stand up, stand up for what you believe in. Stand up and be Awesome worship, guys. I just love singing praises to God with all you kids. So today we are going to be looking at a story that's in the Bible. And it helps us to know who our neighbour is. Because in the Bible, um, back in Jesus' time, um, they, they had these um, rules that they had to follow um, called the Ten Commandments. And in Matthew chapter 22, um, someone asked Jesus what the greatest commandment was. Well, we see what Jesus said. So let's grab the Bible, Matthew chapter 22. Here we go, big 22. And it says, um, it says in verse 36, teacher, he asked, which is the most important commandment in the law? Well, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. So, the person asking Jesus this question, well, he wanted to know what the most important rule was so he could be sure to follow that one rule better than the others. So when it says that we have to love our neighbour as ourselves, well, who is our neighbour? Is it just the person living next door or up the stairs? Well, no, it's, it's everyone that we come into contact with on a daily basis and our neighbour is someone who is in need. So we're going to head back to a clip that we used before the summer where I'm going to tell you the story. It's a little bit different because it comes from the VeggieTales storybook, but it is about the Good Samaritan. Um, so we're going to see who our neighbour is and how we are called to help them. Let's head over and hear about the story of Flibberow Lou. You might be wondering why I am wearing a shoe on my head. Well, I want to share with you one of my favourite VeggieTales stories okay now this story is based on a story in the bible and i wonder if you can figure out which story it is now in this veggie tales book it's called the story of flibber olu i want you to find somewhere comfortable 
maybe get a cushion or a blanket and settle down for story time. In a town to the west called Fliberolu, they thought they were best because they wore a big shoe. But those to the east in Jibberdy Lot disagreed with those folks and instead wore a pot. Till a shoe-headed boy and his blue plastic friend went for a walk down a slope and round a bend. And three shifty crooks jumped out from a rock. They knocked off his shoe, then they knocked off his sock. But the thing they did next was extremely unfunny. Why, they shook him so hard that he dropped his milk money. But they didn't care. They'd accomplished their goal. So they put our friend, friend down, stuck his head in a hole. Oh, things looked pretty grim for our Flibbian buddy. His head in a hole, his shoe bent and muddy. But then, were those footsteps? Oh, could it be true? Along came the mayor of Fliberolu. Oh dear, said the mayor, observing the shoe, a fellow in need, and he's Flibbian too. I'm very important, I'm noteworthy too. Why, I am the mayor of Fliberolu. I seem to have fallen, I seem to be stuck, said the Flibbian boy. Well, I guess I'm in luck. Then a Flibbian doctor said, Out of my way, I have things to do, I s simply can't stay. Oh, it was dreadful. How could they desert their Flibbian friend with his head in the dirt? That's it then, I'm finished. I'll die here, down under. If they would not help me, then who would, he wondered. Then the boy with the pot saw our friend with the shoe. Oh, look, he exclaimed, he's from Flibberoloo. He looked at our friend and he looked at the shoe and then in his heart he knew what to do. He may be Flibbian, that's plain to see, but God made him special just like he made me. So he got him unstuck and he picked up his shoe and together they walked back to Flibberolu. They went to a doctor quite shocked by his pot. The Flibbian's friend was from Jibberty Lot. The boy with the pot paid the cucumber's bill. The Flibians, they were touched by his goodwill. If this little guy can take care of his brother, why can't we all try to help one another? So today, if you visit the mountains of Flibble, you won't see a shoe or a pot. Instead, they throw flowers and candy to nibble. I bet that you'd like it a lot. So there we have it. The Good Samaritan in that story, um, he didn't really care what what the the person who the person was. It was someone in need, and that's so important. It doesn't matter if they have the same beliefs as us, if they speak the same language, if they wear a shoe on their head or a pot on their head. It doesn't matter. We are called to love our neighbour as ourselves. And so that means treating people the same way you would like to be treated. So when Jesus uses the word neighbour, well, he's not just talking about, you know, the person next door or up the stairs from you. He's talking about the people that you see every day. So your classmates at school, your teachers, your mum and dad and grown-ups, your brothers and sisters, everyone in your community. So let's think about this for a minute. How do you like to be treated? Well, do you like it when people share their things with you or when they say kind words to you? Well, do you like it when people help you when you've made a mistake? Well, yeah, we all like it when people are kind to us or share their things with us and help us fix our mistakes in a loving way. And so when we treat other people the way that we would like to be treated, we are treating them with fairness, dignity and generosity. That is justice. But it is also about helping people who aren't being treated with justice especially people who don't have anyone else to stand up for them. Jesus talked a lot about the importance of taking care of people who don't have families and taking care of people who don't have money. When someone doesn't have money or when they don't have a family to help them out, well, they can become easy targets of injustice. 
Just think about all the things that your grown-ups do for you. Well, they provide you with food and clothing and shelter. And if someone treats you badly, well, your parents stick up for you and help you to stand up for yourself. Now, imagine you didn't have these grown-ups to look out for you. If your shoes got too small for your feet, what would you do? And if an adult was treating you unfairly, well, what would you do? And the truth is, all over the world, there are kids and adults who get treated poorly and don't have someone to stand up for them. As God's children and God's people, how should we respond? Well, we should make sure that if there is a child in our school who never has nice clean clothes, well, we shouldn't make fun of them. And how should we respond when we see a homeless person? Well, we can speak to our grown-up and see if there's a way that we can meet their needs. How should we respond when, you know, we learn that there are kids in other parts of the world who don't get enough to eat? Well, we can think about maybe raising some money to donate to a charity to help support these kids. So let's have a look at our craft that we're going to do this week. That links in to this task of how we can stand up for justice. This week, I would love it if we could do a little task, if we could do change for change. And so what this is, is um, we want to try and identify a charity or um, some organisation that is working towards helping people get justice, okay? And um, we can create a collection box. So there's a couple of ideas. Um, you can get a jar um, and you can put stickers on it. You can write with a pen and write who you're raising money for. And then you would just take any spare change that you have and um, drop it in and start collecting it. Or you could take a box and um, maybe a shoe box and you could collect items to put in it that people might need. So speak to your grown-up or get your grown-up to message me and I'll have a chat with you for some ideas. We want to create a collection box that helps us save change to donate. So we can upcycle things like the jar or a shoe box. We can paint it, cover with paper. Um, and whenever you get money or if you are able to go out and um, maybe spend some of your pocket money on um, buying small items that would help someone, um, you can put it in your collection box. You can encourage the whole family to join in. And when the um, box or the jar is full, you can donate that money to the organisation of your choice because we want to see the world changed so that people can experience justice. Now, we have a charity as a church that we support and it is um, Eden Ministries and um, you will have seen at times the grown-ups um, with lovely bits of jewellery on. I don't actually have any of mine on. Um, maybe when I'm finished this clip I'll go and put some um, jewellery on for the end of the, the video. But what they do is an amazing job of fighting for justice for women out in Asia who are not having a good time. They are not being treated well. They are not being treated with love. They are not being treated with respect or dignity. Um, but this charity, Eden Ministries, they change that. They bring these women in and these girls in and they teach them and show them God's love and they help them to see their potential of what they can do and they create this amazing jewellery. So another way that you could um, help to have justice in the world is um, if you wanted to save up some pennies and you could buy jewellery as a gift for someone and not only are you blessing someone with a gift but you're also helping Eden Ministries fight for justice for these women. Here we are. So I very quickly gone and got one of my favourite pairs of um, Eden earrings. Um, so anytime I'm wearing them, um, I'm able to think about these girls and pray for them. And when people ask me about my jewellery, I'm able to tell them um, about the wonderful work that Eden Ministries does. So I believe that Jesus wants us, you and me and all his followers in the church around the world to stand up for justice. But, I mean, what does that look like? Well, 
it looks like you being friendly to kids who aren't like you and to stick up for the different kid that everyone makes fun of. It looks like me buying food and giving it away to a local food bank, which we have. So, you know, when you're when you're at the supermarket with your, your grown up, maybe you could think about um, donating something to, to the food bank. It looks like the church giving time, energy and money to make sure that the homeless people have a place to stay at night. It might look like um, marching in a demonstration to show your support for people who are asking for justice. It looks like all of us taking care of our older neighbours by making sure they aren't lonely and have enough food in their cupboards. Can you imagine yourself doing these things? you would be following Jesus' example of standing up for justice. We're going to head over and have the worship team lead us um, in a song. And during this time, I want you to just think of what God might be speaking to you, what he's putting on your heart. Is there something that I've said today that you think, oh, I would love to do that. I would love to get involved. Um, or maybe you can think of someone that um, you come into you know, contact with. Maybe it's a classmate or um, one of your neighbours who's looking a bit lonely. Is there something that you could do with your grown-ups to help um, help cheer them up? You know, um, offer to to go and get some shopping for them. Draw them a picture. Um, you know, say a kind word when when everyone else is pointing out why a kid is different. There is nothing better than you going and showing them that it doesn't matter if other people think they're different, you can see their heart and you can see God's love for them and you can share God's love with them um, by playing with them and spending time with them and telling them something that you like about them. You know, something that maybe they tell really good jokes, maybe they are good at football, maybe they are a really kind person. So during this time of worship, let's just sit and be open to God telling us what he wants us to do to stand up for justice. Afterwards, we're gonna head in some ministry time um, and that'll be us finished. So let's head over to the worship team.
and I'm here to pray with you today. Now I've been listening to some of the things that you've been learning in this video and it reminded me to wear my special necklace. This is a really special necklace and it has some words on it that are from the Bible and the words are speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. That is something that you've been talking about today, to stand up for people and do the right thing and to speak out and to do the right thing. And this necklace is so special because it is made by someone who had someone else do that for them. They were not in a very good situation and God wasn't happy with the situation they were in either. And somebody spoke up for them and they rescued them from that situation and that now, they can make beautiful jewellery and they can speak up for other people as well. So I was thinking, why don't I pray for you today and we can think about people um, that we can speak up for and do the right thing for. So shall we do that? Why don't we close our eyes and in our imaginations, we can imagine our family or our friends and we can think about times where we can do the right thing and speak up for people when they need us to speak up for them. So, shall we pray? God, I thank you for every single one of the kids that are watching this video today. And I pray that they will be children who speak the truth and speak up when things need to be said and when they need to do the right thing for other people. Even when it's quite difficult, I pray that you'll give them the courage to speak up and be bold and to say the right thing. And God, right now, in these kids' minds and imaginations, I pray that you'll pop somebody in their head that they can be kind to this week and they can make sure that they love just like you love them. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. So, that is us. We have come to the end of week one of our new series, Stand Up. Um, as we heard in the Good Samaritan story, it is so important for us to love our neighbour as ourselves. If someone is in need, no matter where they are from, no matter if they're different from us, if they speak a different language, if they look different, if they act different, God is calling us to stand up for justice and to meet their need. I would love to hear what your plans are for your change for change, what you're going to be storing it in, send me a picture of how you've decorated it. I would love to hear um, as a family how you are getting together to, to go out and uh, go and kind of live out this challenge. Um, so yeah, until next week, stay safe, keep in touch and um, I'll see you then. Bye.